see the discoloration on the copper here? That's from overheating. So that lug was loose right there. But, so yeah, we'll get it figured out, but I'm gonna replace this breaker temporarily and then we're gonna order a retrofit for it, a 70 amp retrofit and we'll get that in. But um, this is part of the issue here. The overheating of loose lugs, I mean, it's been here a long time, but obviously it was just loose enough to get it to let, let it overheat. And then plus the corrosion, I mean, recipe for disaster. Obviously we interceded before that did happen, but uh, this has probably been cooking away for the last 40 years, 50 years. So it's always important to tighten down as much as possible, torque, torque things to the correct, correct torque specs. All right, so what we're doing right now is we remove the breaker. The line side coming from the meter, which are these guys here, should be on these two. So you can replace and service the breaker in the future. So it's important that they're here so it's safe to easily remove the breaker for the electrician and replace the, the breaker without working on live wires. I'm gonna clean that guy up. Is there enough here to strip it again? I didn't restrip this side because it was still nice new copper. So a couple things here. So now we have it where the line side is coming in on the top, not through the breaker where, where it's supposed to be. See, so right now the breaker's in the off position. 
so no, no voltage there before the power of the red ones which is the line that was coming into the bottom of the breaker so anytime you had to change the breaker you had to unscrew live wires hanging all around unless you know so it's just not a good deal to, for i mean you could de-energize it like i did but it's just safer and easier to have the line side come to the top another aspect is these um breakers are all uh on position is down i can't remember the code the number but you, there can't be any breaker where the the on position is in the down position you can have it side to side or up but never down and every one of these if you look every one of them is on and they're down so this is in the off position and it's up right now now it's on let's check the voltage good to go 240 volts so yeah on is in the down position that's not ideal or good it's a code violation but when they put this in i don't think it was a code violation so So I'm gonna start turning all these bad boys on. One great weird thing is, look at this, I don't know what that's, that is there. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, run. what's getting hot in here because something's getting hot. Something's getting a little too snuggly in here. A little warm, which is unacceptable in my opinion. Because what ends up happening is this heat creates resistance and more resistance creates more heat. And it's a cascading event that runs away and you know, um, more heat, more resistance, more resistance, more heat until you get to the point where melting metal and then uh, it goes beyond that into a pretty dangerous situation. Might take a minute for something to get hot. We're only, we've been about energized for about maybe like, you know, 60 to 90 seconds. Um, we might be able to see something, but uh, my bet, yeah, not quite yet. Uh, probably around the five minute mark to the 20 minute mark, if there is something that is overheating here, it'll become, you know, pretty apparent at that point. So we'll let it simmer. Water bake and see what happens. Um, get you guys back in on the action in just a minute. So it'll be like that for you. So We're here restoring power on this FPE panel. We're going to be replacing it. It's a, it's an older FPE. If you look, the, the breakers are all black. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe early 70s, something like that. Maybe late 60s. I'm not sure. Um, installation wasn't done poorly. I don't know what it was done decently, in other words. But I don't know what this is. Um, a little surprise they got going there um, one interesting thing is this panel is poured into a concrete wall right next to the sink so concrete wall look it's literally poured and they did a beautiful job when they poured the concrete I don't know how they got it so perfect I mean the wall is flat and no bowing that I can really discern and the concrete is literally right up to you know the flange that's normally for the drywall um i mean this is obviously mud drywall mud m gypsum uh um plaster but this is solid solid concrete you know and, and this these other you know this is what a normal wall would sound like that's not concrete and this is the concrete wall so interesting that they uh poured it solid in there um makes it a little tricky to replace it especially because it's right next to the sink i wouldn't do that so anyway um we're going to see how we're going to go about doing that we might end up uh putting it outside which this is the exterior wall here or we may put it in the dining room and run a conduit a couple conduits along and have them build the soffit and just put it in the living in the dining room over here um so there's a few options. We'll run them by the customer, see what they want to do. But yeah, FPE panel, melted bus bar, loose wires. Let's see what else we got. Not a whole heck of a lot, you know. Um, so one thing to, to notice here is it's all EMT. Um, there's no uh, grounding conductors, you know, including the main. They, they relied upon the 
uh, this looks like inch and a quarter EMT. Um, so, you know, what happens is, especially close to the ocean like this, because we're very close to the ocean, the, the EMT rots away in the slab, and it's anyone's guess whether or not there is a decent ground to this unit. I mean, there, there probably is, but it's what I, you know, refer to as, you know, like a, um, you know, uh, happenstance ground or, you know, just so happens to be grounded. Um, but, you know, so... Th th the grounding here is probably not as good as it could be. And you're never going to get another conductor back through this pipe. Good luck. Even if a building's 10 years old, EMT through the slab is brought it out. There's going to be sharp little shards in the pipe that will grab a hold of your wire, strip it out. You might even nick the other feeders that are in there and have to replace all of it. So, you know, it, you just, it's not something you can do. Usually if somebody wants me, like let's say we were adding a meter main combo panel outside and, and we, this becomes, this was first means of disconnect and it becomes uh, a sub panel, no longer first means, and we have to separate the neutrals and grounds and there were grounds here, inspector would make it or we would just do it, run a ground. We would just figure a way, if it's EMT like this, to just pipe a new pipe over, not even try. Because what's going to end up happening is you're going to skin the wire inside the pipe or, or nick one of the uh, feeders and and not know about it you know it's just not a good situation so um the ground is relying on the conduit itself currently and that's not an ideal situation um it's probably got somewhat of a decent ground but i wouldn't rely on that 100 percent. and then again each one of these emt pipes is supplying ground throughout the house um and they're also going into the slab i mean ones that go up you know uh are a little better they're going to probably be more intact because they're going to be up Sometimes through concrete still, but it's a little more dry, you know, the deck of a building in between floors. So anyway, uh, that's there's, that's why you don't see any green wires here because they're all uh, the EMT electrometallic tubing. That's what EMT stands for, um, electrometallic tubing. And um, that's what's supplying the ground throughout the house, and that's why you don't see any green wires. So, uh, yeah. Pretty sure that's the uh, window shaker that's getting over 100 here. So it's this bad boy right here. The old wire that was folded up there, I found was a it's a two pole. They must have had a, a two hundred a two twenty volt uh, AC window shaker, and they just made it into a one ten. So that's why it's getting hot. It went over twenty. So we watched it go from like fifteen amps all the way up to 20 amps and it's not a 20 amp breaker FPE so that's not good you know so it will allow it to run for a minute above 20 amps but it's supposed to turn off it's supposed to trip if it's like a consistent load over 20 amps which clearly it's not doing that because if you look it's just heating up so it's just getting real hot. We're at like 100 and 104 degrees, 105. So yeah, 21 amps, still going up. It's just slowly increasing the amperage. The compressor's bad enough. The window shake. And we solved the mystery of that wire that was down here.